So in this lecture, we're going to talk about well models. And well models are needed because these are enhancements to our discrete solution. Because as we have <coughs> a reservoir, and as we've already worked examples um, that can be, you know, on the order of thousands of, you know, on the order of thousands of feet uh, in length and height, uh, and then we discretize that into grid blocks. Even our grid blocks, even our grid block size can be on the order of, uh, you know, tens to hundreds uh, of feet. This is in a typical, you know, practical application. Um, yet then we, we're going to, you know, remember our, uh, in our discrete solution for um, uh, finite differencing, the, the entire grid block just has one pressure, right? This is sort of the average pressure for the grid block, and we, we locate that at the center. Uh, and so, you know, the center of the grid blocks are really the only places where there's any data, pressures and whatnot. Uh, and we interpolate in between that, but we interpolate technically with piecewise constants in a finite, in the, in the scheme that we've been talking about. Uh, so if we're going to place a well into one of these grid blocks, um, well, first of all, the only real place we have information is at the, at the center, so we place the well at the center. And of course, the radius of the well, uh, you know, might be sort of on the order of eight inches or so. And so we have this eight inch well in a grid block that can be tens to hundreds of feet in size, and it's not adequate, it's not a very good representation of the pressure in that grid block, whether the well is uh, a constant rate well or a constant bottom hole pressure well. Uh, but say if you had a, a well, uh, or rather the pressure in a, in a reservoir, uh, as we move out some distance R uh, from the well, right, so the well would be here, um, you know, at, at very long R, at the very far field, uh, R is going to be the reservoir. I mean, the pressure is going to be the pressure in the reservoir, right? Uh, but as we get close to the well, there's going to be a very steep uh, change in the pressure. And again, uh, if we have very coarse gridding, right, then to take the average pressure over this steep gradient would possibly be something like that. <coughs> and that's not a very good or, you know, an accurate representation of the pressure in this grid block. And so a well model is something uh, that enhances the discrete solution to include at least uh, you know, some correction for this variability or the fact that the wells are very small, um, very small things with very steep pressure changes uh, in possibly very large grid blocks. And so with wells, uh, there's two types of constraints we're going to deal with. Uh, one of those would be a rate constraint. So this would be a constant rate <coughs> or a prescribed rate over time. You know, we're going to operate the well at some flow rate. Uh, and so if we specify the rate, uh, then we need to compute the pressure at the well. Right? Uh, however, we could also uh, specify the pressure. Right? So these would be constant, say, bottom hole pressure wells. And in this case, then, we would need to compute the flow of the well. Right? And that's really what we're interested in. How much oil are we going to get out of the well, or how much water do we need to inject into the well? Uh, questions like that. And so, <coughs> going to say that well models enrich the discrete solution with some information or knowledge <coughs> 
in this case, analytical solution. And so the analytical solution we're going to use to enrich our discrete solution uh, is the analytical solution to the radial diffusivity equation. So early in the class, we de to derive the pressure diffusivity equation in Cartesian coordinates. We could have done it also in the radial coordinates. And if had we done that, again, assuming homogeneous isotropic properties like we did at the very beginning of the class, we would end up with an equation that looks like this. where r is the distance in radial coordinates, you know, the radial distance um, from some location. Right? And if we assume steady state, right, so we're, we're going to have no accumulation, right, so we're going to assume steady state, right, there's no time rate of change there. Uh, and apply some boundary conditions. In this, in this case, the boundary conditions we'll apply is that in the limit as R goes to zero, right? So we're going to model our wells as essentially line sources and sinks, or point sources and sinks in two dimensions. And so uh, the limit as R goes to zero, R PDR, so that's the, the flux, the radial flux is going to be equal to where most of the parameters are as they were before, right? So this is, we're talking about in two dimensions here. So D is the depth of the reservoir. K is the permeability, assumed to be isotropic. Uh, QW is the, uh, is the flow rate at the well. Um, mu is the viscosity, and B alpha is the formation volume factor of whatever alpha phase. Could be oil, gas, water. Right? Uh, so we have this. Uh, constraint at the well, and then we'll just say that the pressure uh, is equal to uh, some reference pressure at some radiance that we'll call our reference. Right? And so with those boundary conditions, the solution to the steady state problem is P at R, so P is a function of R, is equal to P reference minus So the way you evaluate this equation is, you know, if you know the pressure at some reference radius, then you plug in those two values, and then with that and some flow rate information material properties, you can then plot the pressure as a function of R as you go away from the well. And so what we're going to do is what, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a single grid block where we've placed a well in the center, and that that well is going to have a, a radius that's equivalent to the radius of the well. And what we want to do is assume that there's some some radius, which we'll call REQ, that is equal to the radius where the pressure is equal to the average pressure in the grid block. So if you remember my figure I drew in the last slide where we have some pressure as a function of distance and we have the well located here, uh, we may have something like this. And then we're going we're gonna to take in a, a discrete location, right, and then the idea here is that the, the average pressure is sort of the, in, in a grid, right? So this, assuming this is you know, delta x here. So the average pressure is sort of the, the integral area under this curve, uh, the equivalent area of a rectangle, right? And so where these two areas, um, 
the idea here, I don't know how well my f it's coming across in my figure, but the, the idea is that the area of the blue um, rectangle and the area of the, of the gray shading are the same, and therefore this place where they intersect is R E Q, right? So this is the, the radius at which the radial pressure um, assigned by this equation is equal to the average pressure in the grid block. And the pressure in the grid block, again, we're talking about a grid block, and let's give it some number. We'll just call it L, right? So the, the pressure in the Lth grid block, the pressure in the Lth grid block is then equal to evaluating the reference pressure at the well minus Qw Okay, again, the reference pressure is at the well, so this is the radius of the well. And so then the radius of the, the radius, I mean, I'm sorry, the pressure at the, at the L grid block, we said, is the average pressure in the L grid block, and it occurs at REQ. Right? So we're going to evaluate this at REQ. So this is our equation. Of course, uh, the pressure in the Lth grid block would go, would be something that we would solve for in our discrete equations. And so then we need to know a few more things, right? We would either know the pressure in the well, the PW, assuming it's a rate constrained well, and we could then compute QW, um, the flow rate, or if it's a, I'm sorry, I think I said that backwards, let me repeat that. We would know the pressure in the well if it's a pressure constraint, and then in that case we could compute the flow rate of that well, or in the case it's a rate constrained well, we would know QW and we could compute PW, the bottom hole pressure. Of course, all of that is assuming that we know REQ. REQ is some unknown location at this point in time. So, in an attempt to find REQ, let's consider a reservoir that has five grid blocks. And it's sort of a strangely shaped reservoir, but nevertheless our discrete equations will work for it, I'm trying to imply that they're all the same size here, and we'll consider this center grid block, the L grid block, and we'll call this the grid block 1, grid block 2, grid block 3, grid block 4, and you remember our discrete equations before any time discretization always resulted in some accumulation matrix times the derivative of pressure with respect to time plus the transmissibility matrix times the unknown pressures, right? This is the vector of unknown PLs, right? Is equal to Q, right? And again, we're going to assume steady states. There's no accumulation. And if we do that, then we can write out the discrete equations. So in other words, remember our T matrix, uh, you know, has this form minus 1, minus 1, 2, minus 1, minus 1, something like that. And it has that stencil. Um, and so if we write out, actually write out all the terms for this matrix, what we're going to have is something that looks like this, and I'm going to factor out a negative sign. And all of that's going to be equal to, right now, so in the Q vector is where we're going to put the flow rate of the well, right? So we're going to have, uh, we're going to assume that there's some flow, some well here in the center that has a flow rate of Q well, 
And so um, our discrete equations then for this system would look like this. So we have this, uh, this equation here. And if delta x equals delta y, then that just reduces to that guy. And I'm going to call this equation star because we're going to refer back to it in a second. So if we now consider, so this, this was written, uh, you know, this equation, remember our, our initial uh, discrete equations here were written in sort of a Cartesian coordinates. Um, uh, so that's where these equations came from and the delta x and delta y's, it's apparent, you know, that they were written on a Cartesian grid. However, uh, we could evaluate these uh, same pressures according to the analytic solution of the radial um, diffusivity equation at these locations because, of course, you know, these locations just rely, of course, on radial, um, long radians uh, of some spherical coordinate, or circular coordinate system that emanates from grid block L. And so that's what we'll do on the next slide. Again, just redrawing our five block reservoir again. Again, understanding delta x and delta y are the same for all of those. Again, this is our L squared block um, one, two, three, four. So if delta x and delta y are equal, then both these distances are delta x, right? And what we'll do now is we'll evaluate. Again, we still have our, you know, REQ, which is the radius of, of which the pressure is equal to the pressure in the grid block, the average pressure. So if we write down our equation here once more, for reference, So now what we'll do is we'll evaluate at each at each grid block with P ref equal to P L and R ref equal to R E Q. So then we have, so evaluating it, P1, Again, at P1, P1 is delta x away along the, if, if r is along this axis, delta x distance away is where P1 is. Then we have that equation, P2 is also delta x away. P3, same thing. P4, same thing. Okay. So again, uh, we have these four equations. We're going to substitute those into star, which was that special equation I wrote before. And when we do that, We'll have 
because you have the same equation for P1, P2, P3, and P4. You can write that as the summation over four times. Now if you notice, you have uh, the summation over PL four times, right? So that's going to result in four PL, right? So you can actually move the four PL outside, right? So move that outside, and then you see that we have a four PL here and a f minus four PL there. Those terms cancel. The minus sign here negates this one, so you have a plus there. And then all of these terms cancel, right? So the KD cancels with that KD. The, the mu B alpha there, mu B alpha there. Then if you divide both sides by QW, QW, then you have a one. You have a one left behind there uh, equal to Two pi. The two comes from the fact that there are four of these, so they have four divided by two, so you have a two in the numerator. Uh, two pi natural log delta x over r e q, which we can then solve. And finally, you have that r e q is equal to delta x e to the minus pi over two. And that's approximately equal to 0 0.278 delta x, or approximately just 0 0.2 delta x. So now we've solved for REQ, and this thing is called the Piesman correction. Because Piesman was the guy that first came up with this. <coughs> And again, there are certain assumptions built into this, namely that everything, you know, steady state, homogeneous, isotropic, delta x equals delta y in the discretization and several other things. And several of those um, restrictions can be removed to uh, create more complicated models. But what's most commonly used is just the Piesman correction, 0 0.2 times delta x. <coughs>